You here? Hello? Are you here? Are you on? Because we're on. This is the Shed Dogs broadcasting from Grant Street. I'd say it can't be any more specific because the neighbors will be upset if there's throngs of fans trying to locate the actual shed. We can't disclose its real location. Uh, and uh, we're gonna, we've got a lot of ground to cover because we're a little tardy on our clearing back log items. And so here we go. I'm Shed Dog RJ. And? I'm Shed Dog KJ. Shed Dog KJ. Hey. What are you doing over there? Pretty darn good. It's us. When I was a kid, I used to I used to daydream about how great it would be to go back to Roman times with a machine gun and a limitless supply of ammo because you'd just rule the world. You could win every battle ever. Now I think it'd be great to go back to 1985 with with uh, my iPhone 14 Pro. Yeah, and some just, kind of massive battery that'll last oh, the rest yeah. of your lifetime. Yeah, yeah. But uh, and then you could you know show people you could just. People would just fall over dead when they saw the images that you can oh, capture I know, and stuff. I know, I mean, yeah. Holy smokes. Walter Cronkite would just have a jammer right on the air. Somebody just took a big sigh and that, that portends well for the next hour or so, I think. Well, in the opening song that you two losers failed to identify, even though Well, it was uh, do it again so I can identify it. Oh, when the sun gets so hot, that's all you get. Under the boardwalk. Nails it. <laughs> Nails it. It's been on my mind, I don't know, days now. Which boardwalk is it, I wonder? I've never read about the song. It could be the uh, boardwalk. New There's Jersey. boardwalks. Oh, you figure it's um, Atlantic, City. Atlantic City? Yeah, Atlantic City. There you go. That's <laughs> kind of like one of the most famous ones. Well, oldest too. And it would, at that time, right after the Second World War, wow, 20 years after the Second World War, it was still the iconic boardwalk, I think. When was that song written then? 62 or 3 or 4 or 1, somewhere okay, in there. Okay. I don't know. I really like the Tom Tom Club version, especially turned up really loud. Under the boardwalk. Great. I love that yeah. arrangement of the back and stuff. Fairly flat vocals. The yeah. vocals are just like snooze or ooh. Yeah. And these guys, the Tom Tom Club is basically the talking heads. Uh, a few of the members of the talking heads. But yeah. Well, there you go. It's a great version. Uh, I think you're right though, around 62, 63. The Drifters anyways. So. Oh, really? The Drifters? Yeah. Okay. And your shoes get so hot, you wish your tired feet were fireproof. Down by the sea On a blanket with my babies Where I'll be Written by Kenny Young and Arthur Resnick and recorded by the Drifters in 1964. It charted at number four. That's all, eh? Yeah, I know. It's just surprising how many great songs charted at like five or something. But they had staying power. Yeah, I mean, the stuff you think about like... So if I can sing that song, it means that it doesn't have a real big range requirement. Because I don't have a big range, right? So then you think, I wonder if the most popular songs are the ones that have a normal range so that everybody can sing them. Nay. Name one song, uh -huh. super popular that nobody can sing. Well, the uh, Star Spangled Banner. That's not super popular. Good example of very difficult to sing. I tried to sing Hotel California. My one time I tried to be in a band. Oh, there right. were three of us in Elkford. And so my job was to kind of learn the, the song. And uh, I just showed up and we were practicing and it was clear that I just couldn't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And movies talked about in this shed before about when you force, you know, yeah, when yeah, you have like, to really force. If I had actually had that conversation with Moby before the recording session or whenever we, our practice session, I might've been able to carry that song, you know. A lot of it would have depended on whether your bandmates are capable of changing key. Well, I'm thinking about, uh, there's probably some Rush songs that... Or just way too high. Is that Getty Lee? Hmm. Yeah, that real shrieking, you know, sh screaming cat vocals. 
Well, well even people, even Bee Gees are all that high too, right? But you can just you, you just can drop sing it. at a full octave lower. There's something yeah. in there though. There's yeah. something in there where if you can reproduce that sound yourself, you like the song way more. Maybe it's just it was an idle thought. Well, if you can sing along, what's the song you can't sing because of range? The Star Spangled Banner <laughs> that Rich mentioned. You have to start really. Oh. Oh, oh, or switch halfway oh, through, switch. halfway through a line, you, and then you change you go, a uh, an yeah, octave. Yeah, and the rocket, and the rocket, red glare. You know, you got to do the full guy in a tux. <laughs> That's fun actually to listen to them because they all start rather tepidly, and, and <laughs> I'm like, sure it's for the same exact reason. They, oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. just the bottom of the barrel down there. Yeah. And if you can reach that easily, you can't do the high notes anyways, you know, like you just can't. Yeah. You, you got to end with your, you know, full <laughs> force. So you, you, you work it out that way. Like Pavarotti could probably do it. <laughs> yeah. He could probably start really strong. Well, he'd start really low Yeah, and yeah, he would have full control down there, way down at the bottom of that register. But yeah. Hey, you want to hear another half-baked, ill-conceived theory notion? I do. Let's hear it. So have you guys noticed that people are putting up their Christmas decorations early? This is what Sue and I have been thinking too, yeah. yeah. So my Light, thought is- Burnaby turned its lights on really early this year, Christmas lights. Yeah, my thought, you know, I have two. One is the serious one and one is the obvious nonsense one. Which one do you probably want? probably both nonsense. The obvious nonsense one is they're all Trumpists. They're all going to vote conservative. No, I don't buy that one at all. I don't buy that one. Why not? Well, because the city of Burnaby is fairly left leaning, and they got they got their lights going now. Mm-hmm. Voters. Yeah. Well, there, we have a Christmas tree up right across the road from us, and I'm going to bet that that guy's not a Trumper. How about a conservative? Eh, he uh, looks like a hipster to me. So okay, I'll go, I guess there can be conservative hipsters. Yeah, that was the nonsense be, goal. Yeah. That was the nonsense. The okay, actual, so you toss that out. Yeah, well, kinda, you weren't yeah. invested in that. Not too much, no. Um, but you know, you do wonder, and I think it's because of American Thanksgiving. Yesterday, I had a Zoom call with my family, two of whom are American citizens. Okay, and of course, their kids are experiencing Thanksgiving. Their grandkids. So we go along and I said, have you guys gotten used to how weird it is to have Thanksgiving like three weeks before Christmas or whatever it is? So yeah, they feel that Thanksgiving is the beginning of the holiday season. And I, mm. be- I believe they're right. right. American Thanksgiving yes. is the beginning of the holiday season. Well, yeah. well, we have Black Friday now. Well, that came mm. right up, didn't it? And why do we have Black Friday? Because Canadian retailers, what the hell, if Canadians are going to be consuming American media Filled with Black Friday ads, we can just cash on that. And we'll For have sure, Black yeah. Friday. Did, how long has that been going on that we've had Black Friday? Quite a while. About uh, 10, 10, 15, yeah, 20 years. Oh. Mm. So now I'm thinking uh, that is the same it reason used why. To be Boxing Day, right? And it got replaced. Yeah. Or in addition to. It's too late then, right? Like you, the Black Fridays, people are in the spending spirit. Oh, and in fact, buying gifts as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the holiday connection. So I think what's happened is we just are more and more steeped in Americana and we are just going right along for the ride. Their stupid Thanksgiving, even though we don't market here, is influencing when people put up their trees and stuff because we still consume a ton of American media. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, yeah, little kids, da, da, da. But when we were little kids, we all lobbied to have Christmas start earlier and never happened, right? (laughs) Did we all? Did you? I have no idea. Maybe we did. I was thinking of those kids across the street, like they're fairly little kids. Yeah. And I'm thinking, the tree's up now. They got a a month and a half to wait before Santa comes. That's too long. That's way too long. Oh, what? You think they get tired of it? I don't know. No, it's like the the anxiousness. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. That's hard on you. If, you know, if it's extended like six weeks or something, you want it to be tomorrow. And it's like every day, oh, it's not Christmas again. But if you're the parent, don't you get to hit your kid over the head for like a month and a half? Better be good, man. The elves are watching. Naughty or nice. Or. A month and a half of just iron control. Or do they just not even 
maybe Santa Claus isn't a part of their Christmas. <laughs> well, the I don't lights know. are because then how come they got those inflatable Santas and elves and stuff in their front yard that they got at crappy tire? Like what? Oh, is that across the street too? I don't know, no, but they're up. So. They're up around. Oh, already. yeah, yeah. They're going Christmas trees at uh, Home Hardware yesterday. So I'm delivering them. Oh, mm-hmm. coming off the truck. Well, and I once left my tree up, as you dogs will know, for a whole year just to see what would happen. (laughs) And it was okay. Like it didn't, it was just there collecting dog hair and dust. This is not a potted tree. This is just a tree. No, it's just an artificial tree. tree. Oh, an artificial tree. Yeah, Yeah, no, I would never, that wouldn't have worked. But uh, (laughs) yeah, and then just, you know, turned them on. December 15th, turned the lights on. Okay, Chris. Didn't make any, it took it down <laughs> mid-January, all good. No probs. That's Today, funny. is the weather going to be good again tomorrow? I don't yeah. know, but it's spe- yeah. so I'm going to put my lights up, but we're not going to turn them on until December yeah. 1st. That's our hard line. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's just, and then that, it's easy to remember every year, and we never have, like, creep happening. I've, I see the crews out on the street today, actually, <clears throat> hanging Christmas lights. You know, the people in the vans who come and hang your Christmas lights for you. I don't know what funeral march we're going to have to identify as the theme music for the curmudgeon segment, but I believe this is the curmudgeon segment. Nice. I don't know. I just think, what would I suggest? That you're going to devalue the experience if you, like you say, the kids across the street for a month and a half, they're going to be full of giddy anticipation. Is that what we're thinking? No, they're just going to not care. They're just going to, okay, now it's time to start really twisting the twisting the nails with mom and dad. On well, what I, I do want. know the longer the lights are up, the less value they have. Cause you know, I, I know that when we start turning on our lights, how nice it is. And then we leave them on now a little bit into February, even that's creep. We've crept. <laughs> oh yeah. See now you just finished. And a lot of people, I would say, in fact, that creep is stronger on the far side in terms of Christmas lights. They stay up longer and longer and longer but it's diminishing returns because you've already had the, oh, isn't that crazy? And after a while, you simply don't even notice. Yeah, I have them up near my door to my place, which doesn't face the street and nobody can see. But really, at this point, they're just light. They light up my walkway and that's their real value. Oh, so I don't you ever keep think your Christmas as, lights on Yeah, all they're year? on a timer and just every night they go on. And right, What colors are they? Multicolor. Multicolor like all year long. Yes. If I ever lived in a trailer court, I would just slip right in there. I'd be like a native. So, you know, I think there's some nuance in terms of what you've been saying, because which I, which is lost on me because I'm thinking you're curmudgeonly about people leaving their lights on and yet you leave your lights on all year long, which is the most ever of anyone. So, I mean, if you can start splitting hairs about, well, what about just leaving them on the building all year long, not turned on? Yeah, I did a well, I'm whole okay bunch. With that. I did a whole bunch of that. Yeah. It kills the lights. It does. Yeah. It, they look all <laughs> washed out and pale exactly. and ghostly the next couple exactly. of years. Exactly. Plus all the rain on the LEDs, yeah. which don't look washed out, but they get rain on them and they just basically they stop cook. working. Yeah. yeah. I'm not very hard line about any of this. If somebody wants to leave their Christmas decorations out looking all pathetic and bedraggled in the rain, you would be hard line. Go right ahead. But you leave them on all year, so you can't be hard line. No, I wouldn't be hard line because I just don't care that much. But I I gotta say that uh, the odd house that does keep Christmas lights up all year round, I appreciate that. Turned on? Turned on. Why do you appreciate it? Because so it, it just, looks nice. Yeah. And does it warm it, the cockles of your old heart? It does, but they, oh. they could be just like white lights, not necessarily the Christmas colors. Oh, mm-hmm. another another flavor. <laughs> this yeah. is quite the little onion we've got going here. <laughs> yeah, the all white ones are nice, actually. <laughs> so you'd be okay with leaving you <laughs> all whites on? So what if what if they're all white icicle lights? Is that too much? Is that a step too far? It's too much. Oh, yeah, it's too much. Too I far. Agree. Look at that <laughs> instant reaction. Oh, that's too much. No. We all have unfounded opinions. Yeah. <laughs> just we're happy to trot them out. The fun thing is we're surprised to discover we have any thoughts at all about something like that. I mean, like way bigger fish to fry. Hey, you guys want to do listener mail? More than anything. You know why? Because we didn't last time, did we? No. Because this is all about the listeners. People think we just come in here because we've known each other forever and we need an excuse to get to That's wrong. It's all about listeners, right? Right. Aren't I right? It sure is, PJ. (laughs) (coughs) 
<clears throat> Sorry about that. Editing this is going to be brutal because I got this uh, yeah thing going on. Yeah, I got that's the meds that are waiting for me. I got to start taking them. All those embarrassing meds. Mm. Some guy phoned and he was on speakerphone while we were all in the car with him the other day, and the guy was telling him what he just like. Come on, man! I don't need to hear <laughs> this. guys. You know, I have your uh, hemorrhoid pills here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Jesus. You know what? Here's the funniest thing I've heard in a long time. While Rich lines up the mail, we were out for a walk the other day and, you know, somebody had a dog with them that was walking with us. And we were talking about when dogs see each other on the trail, right? And Rich was telling me, you know, he's had Took, his daughter's dog, Took. Took, shout out, beautiful dog, almost as good as Buddy. And Took's just Mr... He scares the wits out of people, especially with people with small dogs, because he looks like he's going for blood. He's just playing, but he just, he can come off as pretty hostile sometimes. So he was talking to some woman and he'll chime in when he's ready, but they, some, some pit bull was attacking their little dog and it wouldn't let go. Cause you know, pit bulls, once they get into the berserker mode. Once they get there, once all that careful, dedicated training. Like jaw right, on neck kind of. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So this woman <laughs> jammed her finger up the dog's butt because she was told that's what <laughs> that's what you do to make them release. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've had your finger up a dog's butt and your little fluffy still getting aced, right? So then you have to get a, like a big pry stick and pry the dog's she got a stick, yeah. jaws open. A huge branch or something. I'm not sure. A big stick and just had to pry the dog's jaws off. But you know what? I think. And her little dog survived. The but whoa, whoa, wait. What, what about the owner of the pit bull? I guess probably. That wasn't I'm glad you think this is so funny. Just, just, well, imagine <laughs> imagine being driven to that length to save your beloved dog. I know what to do. <laughs> you do it and just nothing. I think I'd stick that same finger up that stupid dog's owner's butt. It's, geez. Oh, man, I laugh. Just because it's one of those things like where do you hear stuff like that? Where do you get the idea? That that is absolutely in in the in your extreme moment, when it's all or nothing, it's life or death. That's what you see. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh boy, it's like <laughs> I just I just think all the situations where it's super life and death. <laughs> that's how many of them could be changed entirely if you use that approach. Somebody's fading because of drug overdose. Forget the naproxen. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Oh. But didn't the, didn't the woman worry about her her own the safety of her hand? I just have no idea. Violating and the dog that he would just, just turn around. just kind of think, too, like, did she wipe her hand on the owner? That's another option, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, your stupid dog almost here. Wipe your hand off on their shirt or something. Like, Jesus Christ. I don't know if we'll be able to use that segment, but man, yes, I will. just killed myself when I heard it. Oh. <laughs> okay, I might live now. <laughs> the fact that it didn't work means <laughs> why, the, why do that step, you know? That's like, the thing that's But she the had real, heard, she had heard that it works. So. That's the thing that's the real killer, right? Like we all consume all this information that we are not sure is true or not true. And somebody consumed a piece that just didn't work out at all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's not something we practice at home. So we got listener mail? Is that what you're saying? We do, yeah. Excellent. Uh, Nancy from New Westminster on episode 165, The Time Traveler with Cap'n Bob. Hey boys, this episode made me laugh out loud a lot. Rob is hilarious. And the rest of you were pretty funny too. Oh, thanks. We got counted yeah. in that as well. I particularly enjoyed the visual of RJ and a dress. I think I'll keep calling him Ginger from now on. <laughs> she goes on, I just got invited to a wedding in Saskatchewan, but unfortunately am not able to go. Can you tell how broken up I am? I'm waiting for my road trip when I can just sort of just drive through the province and not really have to stop anywhere. A decision confirmed by today's podcast. Thanks for the entertainment, dogs. 
what was she um, trying to say there? We had a segment with Rob. Where Rob talked about how there's a lot of nice people there, but man, they have some unbelievably terrible attitudes. <laughs> and da 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 da. So Nancy, I'm very sure, is not going to tolerate intolerance any member of any kind of letter community. LGBTQ plus three divided by pi. The inference was Saskatchewan's just chalk block with intolerance. And so she's going to uh, just motorate through. Mm -hmm. Don't buy that, by the way. Oh, no, it's not. It's not black and all white. All it like takes that. is like, yeah, all it takes is like the population has 10% more wackos. Then everyone goes, yeah, they're completely wacko there. But it's really, there's all kinds of people from all different stripes in every place. Thank you, Rich. Except here in the shed. I'll, I feel better now. I do too. I was feeling a little bleak about the world until he told us that. <laughs> now I feel better about the future of mankind and my kids. I've been on anti-bleakness lately, you know, because I signed up for Blue Sky, right? <laughs> so, so I've been on Mastodon and I've curated so that it's almost nobody who's angry all the time. So it's more like somebody who's a good artist or whatever. There are some, some left-wing people that kind of have political messages and stuff, but there's just almost no one who's out at the, the wacko fringes getting angry at stuff. Please explain what you just said. You're on what now? Oh, Mastodon. Which, it's kind of like a Twitter-like thing. Okay. It's been around for quite a while, and it's grown somewhat since the, you know Elon Musk has started to go off the deep end on, on the Twitter thing. Mm. The thing about Mastodon though, is it's not a great news service. Like Twitter is, or used to be, or maybe is sort of now, uh, pretty good for reporters, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old, you know, and so you follow say Justin McElroy and you go, yeah. you like his stuff. So you get a nice feed of news stories, but Mastodon doesn't attract those, uh, reporters for much. now. It's more because I kind of hang out. Uh, online with tech stuff and there's a lot of tech stuff on Mastodon. Ah. So I finally got my invite code for blue sky, which is another kind of attempted Twitter replacement. But again, like I'm on there and I'm going, it's, I got to get started. That means I need to follow some people. It says, do you want to add these people? And I'm basically pictures of cats. I go, yep, I'm in on that. Yeah. You know, like I don't want my day to be filled with people who are angry. Yeah. That's the main thing. I don't want to see a lot of posts about Trump is now using phrases like tainting the blood of America. His political enemies, enemies are vermin. I don't want to see that stuff because it's terribly frightening. And I just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind seeing that in the news though. The Washington Post had their headline for that thing about Trump was uh, similar to the Nazis before World War II, Trump describes his enemies as vermin. Yeah. So they actually put that right in the headline on the Washington Post, which is very, very rare, like WAPO and the New York Times have always bent over backwards to both sides everything. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that whole thing is just... Oof. Oof. Yeah, I don't mind seeing that. I, I just don't want to see people getting uh, super angry and shouting at each other and and not having, you know, good discussions. Yeah. I'm just put up pictures. I'm on blue sky also. And I put up pictures of cats, no Puppies. dogs or skies. I, I'm getting a lot of sky shots yeah. lately for some reason. Do you cross post? Cause I see those on Instagram as well from you. I only have posted so far on Instagram that one, that mm -hmm. I got a shot yesterday of the sky. It just looks like uh close encounters or something like the clouds had all these ripples in them and then the sun is shining down through them and it's just like, what on earth is going on there? Woo. Send it to National Geographic. Oh, I just posted it. No, they'll pick it up. They'll pick it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, for sure, yeah. Winner. Chicken dinner. Well, on, uh, on Twitter, I, I don't think anybody ever liked any of my posts except for you maybe. Hmm. Uh, on, uh, I've only posted once on Blue Sky. As with Twitter, my handle is slow but effective. Okay. It's a callback to my foosball era. Rob used to say that about my shots. And anyway, so I've always been slow, but effective. And so my first post and only post on blue sky is slow falls in a forest. <laughs> and then this morning I checked and two people had liked that post. There you go. Like, how is that? Like, first of all, why are people following me in the first place? It's got a different culture than Twitter. Then people just randomly follow people. Well, it probably gets suggested. 
Why? I have no followers. Why is that might be why you're suggesting? Oh, it probably is suggesting people with no followers to try and get them going. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Kind of like trying to start a car. Yeah. (laughs) An old car. I know we're in listener mail still, but I got to say, speaking of trying to start a car, PJ, I sent you uh, two videos about interplanetary gears. Well, one of them was just a really short thing on planetary gears. I like interplanetary. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. KJ. Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was a 30 minute one on how the Prius hybrid drive works. One of the things I've always wondered about is why the hell am I driving down the road in the Camry with the engine running and it's charging the battery? To me, I always think, well, why don't you just use brakes for recharging only? Well, well do tell, because I've had that exact thought in my Prius. Yeah. Just I'm just coming thinking, down the hill, the engine's running pretty first hard. First of all, first of all, the battery's around 80% all the time, yeah. you know? So I'm thinking, why don't you just recharge when I'm going down a hill? Especially if you were on some big road trip and you're at the top yeah. of the Salmo Crest and, yeah. and you know, the car doesn't know that you're heading towards a, a peak, but if, if you could tell the car, Hey, use up all the battery, please, because we're about to get to a peak and then you can charge it for free. Anyway, that's just an aside. It turns out that there's, um, and I was kind of guessing this, there's this sweet spot in terms of RPM. And that sweet spot has got a range like 2,500 to 3,300 or something. This range is the most fuel efficient. So you could be anywhere in that range and be very similar in terms of fuel efficiency. But if you're at the higher end of that range, you're just wasting Mm. extra stuff. Like you don't need that much torque to keep the car going, but for whatever reason, they're running the engine at that speed. And so you got, now you got extra power left over. So you just feed it to the battery, charge the battery. And it's called a torque curve and that's interesting. So they take advantage of the, the downhill side as their RPM increase. Anyway, have a, re- have a, a look at that thing. It's just fascinating. And I didn't fully understand everything. Did you tell me that Toyota's only going to sell hybrids starting in 2030? The Camry something? is, next year's Camry is all hybrid. Oh, just the Camry. Well, yeah, but I mean, the Prius has always been 100% hybrid. Yeah, yeah. But I, I so, came away with the misunderstanding. I was thinking, well, what about all those Tundra owners? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they're not going to want hybrid anything, you know? Like, Well, maybe. I mean, I know that their trucks do come in hybrid options. I'd, but I would love to see the figures comparing sales of regular gas oh, to Oh, absolutely, hybrid, you know? yeah. The truck guys, like even if the hybrid gives them better power, they hate hybrids because they'd rather burn more gas. Absolutely. And eat beef just to compound everything. (laughs) Thanks for letting me hold forth, guys. What else we got in listener mail? Lee from Courtney on episode 170, Barry Pickin. Hi, dogs. A great wide-ranging episode. No cap. Remember no cap, (laughs) Yeah, no cap. (laughs) I'm glad Susan, when she popped in, threw out the challenge for you to see the Barbie movie. I was really hesitant to go at first, but did go along with a lot of other women and young girls and a very few solo secure males. And I'm glad I did. The girls watching the movie pretty much liked the clothes and the songs and missed the whole feminism patriarchal subtext, but it was there quite loud and clear. I wanted to just speculate just a tiny bit about whether the girls in that audience missed it or whether that message is in fact so well recognized and understood that it didn't really need to be acknowledged that much by a lot of the women in that audience. And they just, yeah, it's a fun way to say it, but really the point of the movie is it's a fun way to say it as opposed to it really needs to be said. Yeah, I don't know. I, and I could have all kinds of opinions on it, but I don't think I have my fingers on the pulse of 12 year old girls at this point. Like it, it's either like it could be swinging towards, we actually don't care about all this stuff that you guys yep. have been caring about, or it could be, we understand this stuff so well that it's, it's dead obvious and I wouldn't even bother yeah. thinking. Yeah. Much. And the reason I think that what I just said is because quite often my kids have surprised me with just a complete comfortable knowledge of something that I wouldn't have imagined they knew hmm. some social issue, political issue, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just, oh yeah, no, that's, yeah. We thought that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you sort of think, oh, you knew. And they just, yeah, well, yeah. So that's why I think that. 
Lee continues, it is also fun, so don't think it will be all preachy, but it should make one think. I just finished editing a dystopian novel by an Ontario author, and of course it was very depressing, explaining why I avoid the dystopian genre in movies and books as a rule, and definitely called out the patriarchy for creating a large majority of the problems the world currently faces. Now that's something I didn't know about Lee. So she edits. That's one of the reasons you'll see angry Facebook posts about punctuation, about daylight saving time. I don't know if they're angry so much as... Oh, they're frothing, <laughs> curmudgeonly <laughs> I think angry. she's stopping fun. And Lee, I want to hear from you then about how do you feel about chat GPT? Is it encroaching on your career? I'm going to say no. Well, I, I will be interested to hear what well, she has to say Yeah, too. maybe, maybe no right now, but I'm curious about whether she feels it's a threat to her career. Yeah. I'll like three years down the road, for example. Yeah. The book's author, this is the person from Ontario that Lee is editing their book. The book's author quite liked the Barbie movie. So there you are. As an aside of the very few people saved from extinction at the end of the book, most were vegans. In case any of you wanted to rethink your eating choices. <laughs> All right. In case some dystopian novel turns out to predict the future accurately. Finally, oh KJ snappers were good ones and I always enjoy them. Sometimes I'm yelling, come on, PJ and RJ. That's not what that means. Yeah. Well, we get a lot of that. From my treadmill and other times they're all new to me and one or both of you will just nail it. The phrase dead to rights came up and its origins were pondered. Everyone knew the intended meaning and my etymology search has produced this. Dead in this instance means fully or completely, which you all pretty much said. The to rights was an old prepositional phrase meaning in proper order. First recorded in 1859 and came out of New York City criminal slang. And the lo and behold phrase, of course, was familiar to all and reminded me of what a fellow I worked at CKNW radio with used to say, I'm bringing Barb to the Christmas party and she'll be wearing her Bible dress. <laughs> her Bible dress? Yeah. Lo and behold. <laughs> Does that mean lo down here and behold up here? I think it means lo and behold. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't translate well audio-wise, but that's fine, I think. Now, in, in Lee's previous uh, email, it was about the Barbie movie before we'd watched yeah. it. And in this episode, we had watched it and gave our reviews. Yeah. And so she says, so the Barbie movie, as I'd mentioned in an earlier note, I too really liked it and thought that it worked on a variety of levels which is why there were females in the audience from seven to 70 and each got something out of it. There were also some guys and I think that more men should actually see it. But most importantly, I want to come to play with Sue and her Barbies. I mean, you said she made little letters that were mailed to Barbie. Incredible. I still have my three Barbies, but actually none of them are Barbie. There are two knockoffs and one Kelly which I got for 25 cents and two box tops sent to Kellogg's cereal wow. company. So Kelly was Kelly real or was that Kellogg's version of Barbie? Oh, maybe so. Cause it was Kelly K E L L I. I wonder. And that does sound exactly like it. Lee continues, uh, about her three Barbies. They would all totally want to play with Sue's Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> they have their own clothes, their hair is still good, and one of them has earrings that I made and pierced the ears myself. <laughs> that is cool. That's high risk. That's how you end up with the ones that their hair is all crazy oh, and they've right. got yes, yes. marker on their faces and stuff. As you start out, I just, I'm just going to pierce their ears. And the next thing, Tattoos. Ooh, you got a G.I. Joe head clamped onto the top of your <laughs> Kelly doll. <laughs> And finally, good tip, RJ, read the gift cards and serial numbers on the envelopes. Mm. It is now something I will check for, and it will make me feel very tech savvy. Yeah, that, is, that was a good thing, that whole business. Yeah, Sue just went and bought another $100 worth, and uh, she bought the variable kind where you can actually see the serial number through. There's a hole cut oh. so that you can actually see the serial number 
on the inside so they don't have to reprint the serial number on the outside so that when the vendor scans it, they're actually getting the real card scanned, not the representation of what it is on the outside. Just, so it, so the thieves can't kind of replace it. Just that. an endless arms race. Eh? Yes, exactly. The thieves will figure something else out. Thank you, Lee. I wonder how she pierced him. Like a hot pin? Yes. Probably. I'll bet. And finally, our final uh, letter, once again, from Lee from Courtney. A uh, new comment on dogs in Portugland. Isn't that a gross way to say it? That's what I liked about that. <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of like gland. It's Anytime you say yes. gland, that's one of those words, right? Oh, is it? Then you can go afterwards and then <laughs> oh, just gross. Oh, yes. <laughs> How many glands are there? I don't know. One too many, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, your adrenal glands, your oh. phosphate glands, <laughs> your pituitary <laughs> gland, your prostate gland in some cases. Uh, uh, what's the gland? Lymph glands. Thyroid. Thyroid, Thyroid that's, that's it. Boy. Yeah. Uh, what is a gland? Does a gland always produce a fluid? Uh, fluid? Well, I don't know. I guess so, because... Like, a prostate gland produces prostate <laughs> or is it semen? Is that what's produced by a prostate gland? I think so. I, okay. you know, honestly, I'm not even too sure, but I think that is what it does produce. Yeah. Okay. And the thyroid gland clearly produces thyroid. Thyroid. Yeah. You know, niacin, thymine and thyroid. It's in Kellogg's <laughs> stuff. That's right. Promoted by Kelly. I don't know. It's, you know, the adrenal gland produces adrenaline. Yeah. I so the thyroid what, gland must produce I think thyroid that's what glands are, yes. They're. But they produce chemicals of some sort. They refine and produce chemicals. Welcome back, you traveling dogs. Very good trip reviews from RJ and PJ and cool photos on your podcast website. Re PJ's trip. So he starts out by saying that if someone was making their first trip to Europe, he would caution them not to have it be to Portugal. And then he immediately details what sounds like an absolutely fabulous country and travel experience. Minus the bicycle unfriendly cobblestones, of course. Historic sites abounding, fields of olive groves, beautiful ocean shores, 2,000 year old stone bridges, and lots of pork to eat. Sounds pretty great to me. And I got to say, I totally agree with you on that, Lee. It's the same old thing. I get this from PJ on a number of topics. He'll talk about how bad something is in a general sense and then list off all these wonderful things about it. I don't have a defense. I was going to go on and on about how I'm trying to be positive. I just think there are other better countries where the food is better, where the climate is better. The thing about the world is it's so rich. Like... You could list like a thousand places to go in the world and you could choose something that's yeah. at number 323 and just have the most wonderful time. Yes. And, and it, you could list any place and talk about its drawbacks as well. That's true. You could go at the number one place to go and talk about what was bad about it. And you guys were musing about someone, in quotes, saying how relatively easy it is to immigrate to and buy property in Portugal. Yes, that someone was me. In one of my comments, back away is when PJ was talking about going on this trip. Yep, you heard it here first. RJ's New England trip also sounded wonderful, and I'd been to a great many places he and Sue went to, even including Louisa May Alcott's home in Concord, Massachusetts. If the U.S. ever gets its collective act together and stops being such an awful, awful place for so many reasons, I'd revisit New England for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have other friends that don't want to go to the States for the same reason. and Yeah, and it would be great if they would get their act together before our act becomes the same as theirs. Yeah, we're not getting worse. Okay. Well, good. I mean, yeah, you just go back through history and there are so many times that there are people who are nearly autocratic and on the verge of making it in. It just never stops. It's an ongoing vigilance required though. Yeah. But I'm tired. I mean, especially in the States, once again, polls were showing, oh man, it's looking bad for the Democrats. Once again, the Democrats did way better than expected. So I just think, and the more that Trump talks about vermin, 
the narrower his voting base is going to get. Really? Yeah. Honest to God. I almost Tell posted something to say, I expect to hear him talk about Aryan race within the next three weeks. They're, they're tainting American blood. Did he use that term? Yes. Wow. Yeah. He used it more than we used it in several different places. And he means immigrants? Yeah. Wow. Tainting That's the purity brutal. of American blood. Oh my God. And it's just like, wow, dude. Oh man. It's just terrible. Yeah, yeah. Dehumanizing is the idea. Yeah, I think that is the idea, yeah. I don't think he stands a chance. Jeez, I sure hope not. Actually, in the last week, I've sort of been hoping for Biden to have a jammer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. But Sorry, Joe. Just a little something before Christmas, and I think everything it's, would work out just fine. It's nothing personal or anything. You've only got one more thing to give the country, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Cough it up, dude. <laughs> Uh, but there was that election in the Netherlands yesterday, right? Yeah. Yeah. That uh, far right, like anti-Muslim, far, far right. Yeah. No, they're in a situation where they still need to cooperate. Right. So I assume that he didn't get 50% of the votes. So did he win a minority government? Oh, yeah. Saying? He has a minority and they can't form the government until he gets others to agree with them. Well, but it's I mean, something to watch. That's absolutely. For sure. If it's a minority government, you got to hope then there's a governor on, on some of the more radical things they might otherwise propose. Yeah. And you hope that whoever's holding the balance is at the other end of the spectrum, in fact. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, I just have a harebrained theory that the Netherlands, you don't necessarily need agreement of all the legislatures to move on things. I mean, really, I have nothing to base that on other than the fact that they actually managed to transform some of their cities and doing that democratically is super hard to do. Doing it here in BC. Yeah. A little bit at a time. Yeah. Well, they, they made that declaration about how zoning was going to be that was fantastic. managed and that is a big thing. That is really good. And bus rapid transit as well. Yeah. Three new lines coming in. So, of course, there will be people who will argue that that isn't democratic to do that. But in fact, it is. That's exactly what elected governments do. That's true. And Lee said, I followed along on the one picture a day postings on Facebook and it looked stellar. Also, RJ's comments about the hot motel rooms, but limited options for bed coverings made me think that it might be a good idea to buy a cheapish sheet or spread of some kind on one's first day take it to each of the overnight stops and just donate it at the last one. And you know, Lee, that is exactly what we thought about doing in the UK after we had that experience. We never did do it, but we, when we go on uh, car trips, we have an extra bag with a blanket and a sheet in it so that we have more options. So here's a, uh, here's a million dollar idea to wherever in the center of the earth is the giant plant that manufactures those brown blankets. Yes. Get on the web. Just get on the web, establish an online presence where you sell. You know those brown blankets that is every motel in the world? Order them here. You just, they probably don't need to because they're probably selling blankets like a billion a year, but still. So I'm just Googling brown motel blankets right now. What is the name of those brown fleece-like blankets that hotels... This is a Quora question that hotels always carry the ones that are stiff and thick answer from Jenny Jennifer who studied bedding at the university of Toronto. That's nice. not true. She graduated in 2010. That's not true. There's no, what do you get a degree, degree in degree bedding? In bedding. Come on. And Jenny, it, bedding Jenny. is capitalized. There are two types of blankets in hotel. Number one, fleece blanket. That's the brown ones. Number two, Velux blanket. Their dimensional measures, 66 by 90, 240 GSM thickness makes them extra soft and fluffy. With silky smooth and non-sticky texture, our premium Velux blankets have fire retardant quality. They are machine washable. Of course, you need that in a motel, don't you? And they're ultra soft, light, and warm. Fleece blanket, also 66 by 90. Our fleece blankets are fire retardant with 280 GSM thickness. So there's a little thicker. They are light and warm and can provide the ultimate pleasure. Our fleece blankets are machine washable, <laughs> quite easy to carry. By hotellinen.com. So now we know the company. But going back to Jenny Jen, 
Jennifer. Jenny and Jennifer. Jenny Jennifer and her degree in bedding. Is she just a <laughs> spokes monkey for the hotel living? It looks like it. Okay. It really looks like it, doesn't it? Jeez. <laughs> See, this is the kind of thing that I mean when I think about, am I just getting old and cranky? Because I get hung up. It's like five minutes ago, right? It hasn't left my, damn it, there's no such I thing. Think, and the thing is bed. that, uh, where does she say she got her degree? Toronto. Oh, oh there is a U of T, right? University yeah. of Toronto. Okay, my dad so went there. Graduated in 2010. Wow, I swear I got to do some research and see if they offer a degree in betting. Oh, man, I hope not. It's going to be a part of the hotel management. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I got a bachelor of wood splitting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this right here is your double bitted axe. You know, use that for splitting. It's more of a falling axe. It's not part of our career. Yeah, no. You're putting in your new 400 room hotel and you uh, have to consult with someone who has a degree in betting. Yeah, GSM. <laughs> you go yeah. four years to school so you can bandy terms like GSM about yeah, whatever yeah. that means, yeah. you know, grommets per square meter or yeah. something. Thank you, Lee. And that is listener mail. We're all caught up. Excellent. It's been a long time. We let that uh, ride for way too long. So unleash the next avalanche. For sure. And we're going to do much better at every everything. second episode. Well, just everything. Oh, everything in general, we're going to do much oh, better. Oh, yeah. At. You know, I, you guys have been listening for quite a while now. And finally now, we've come to the point as podcasters that we're about to really start that curve getting steep up. Hey. You know what? Speaking of Moby Snappers, listeners, the other day, RJ and Sue and I and a friend went for a walk in Aldergrove Regional Park, and one of the featured attractions at this regional park in Aldergrove was a enormous erratic. My brother Tim of North Carolina knew exactly what, what an erratic was. I knew what an erratic was, too. Before that? Yes. You knew that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is an odd term. It's a very odd term, but it's just that aside, just the fact that somebody, why would you know? Do you know what an erratic is? Nay. Thank God. It's just a big rock that gets carried from one place to another by a glacier and dropped when the glacier starts to recede. Not necessarily a big rock, but a rock of some like. Yeah. I don't know if they would call an erratic like a little one foot boulder. Well, I was going to say something. every time I've heard of erratics, it's always been like big rocks. But like, that you know, just makes them, that's because they're remarkable, right? It's remarkable, exactly. There's a whole it. pant load of unremarkable erratics the size of that stove. Yeah, like that whole park is what used to be one big giant uh, gravel pit. Yeah. But you wouldn't call those pieces of gravel erratics. Wouldn't you though? No, because it's not remarkable. So then you're telling me that the use of the word enormous is redundant. Yeah. Erratics are big. I mean, I, I think this is what I think. I think we'll have to, we'll have to look it up. It's not going to say like, oh, a molecule is erratic, you know, like <laughs> there has to be something. <laughs> so I think. he goes, he goes fully <laughs> to the other, other end of this spectrum. Absolutely. Jeez, what I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, he knew I was just blown that he would know that. I, hmm. I don't know why he said, well, because they have. Erratics in northern Michigan. Oh, yeah. Okay, they probably have them in a zillion places, but why would anybody know that term if they're not a geologist? Just because you happen to have been on a walk where it mentions some erratics. I guess so. Yep. Well, way to go you and uh, Tim of Durham both. And uh, listeners, if you're in the lower mainland, that uh, Alder Grove Regional Park is spectacular. Um, great views of Mount Baker and other Cascades. Shooksand, for example, just to its north. Yes. And, uh, we had a big conversation. PJ was going, I wonder which of these are volcanoes. And I'm just going, they're all volcanoes because <laughs> they're all volcanic in my opinion. But then afterwards I had to look it up and realize that, nope, it's just the big conical ones or X conical ones that are volcanoes. Some of them were actually tectonic shifts that would, you know, these jagged peaks just. Well, most of the cascade range is the product of tectonic shifts. Yeah. They it? all kind of is, shoot up. Right. Yeah. Then at that point, they're probably subject to possible volcanic activity, but many of them are not many of yeah, them. Because what, they're not even dormant. They're not even volcanoes. Right. I think that is the deal. When plates <clears throat> collide. There's they, magma underneath. Yeah. And, and there's sometimes it escapes in between the yeah. edges of the collision, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, it's a cool place really. And 
Like it's probably too late for this year, but I bet you in the brightest part of fall colors, that park is just fabulous. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was pretty great the other day and most of the leaves are gone. Another great thing in that park is the beaver dams. This creek, the beavers dam it up. It becomes, you know, like marsh, pondy lake and just really pretty. All covered with algae. Little green floating algae thingies. Yeah, little leaves, like visible individual little tiny leaves. I always thought algae was like dust that floats, you know, like Mm. really tiny particles you can't really see with your eye the algae that's in those ponds is little tiny leaves yeah i mean we were calling it algae i don't really know if that's maybe technically what it is maybe that's the problem is we don't know so pretty though maybe we'll post a picture or two from that walk a few weeks ago probably a month ago my daughter my youngest daughter suggested that she and i go and watch the taylor swift concert movie called eras or eras i guess it's eras eras and I declined, uh, you know, kind of old and stale, didn't want to go. So then RJ went with Sue and they raved about it. And, you know, you can have your choice of the concert experience movie viewing where they have a mosh pit and, you know, there's places where you're allowed to stand and scream and yell and all that. Or you can just sit in your lazy boy and watch it at the other non-concert venue which I elected to do. So what you're saying is you could go to a movie theater where they allow people to stand. Yeah. They, they, and then it becomes almost like a concert. Yeah. It yeah. enhances the concert likeness mm-hmm. of it. I didn't do that. Um, and I don't regret not doing it either, but when you say I didn't do that, did you mean that you made the call on that yeah. or Jenna did well, not make actually that call? truth be told, uh, by the time we went to see it, which was last week, sometime last Saturday, they were only offering it in the VIP theater, which is oh. not the one that you can do a concert. They oh. only were playing it in one theater. Oh, okay. Because it's been okay. out for a while. Yeah. Anyway, it was great. It was really fabulous. Wasn't I, that amazing? I just was so surprised. I mean, I've always liked whatever I happen to have heard of Taylor Swift's music, lyrics especially. I think she's a really, really great lyricist. Uh, she's obviously a talent, but... The concert thing was really a surprise to me. Mm. I mean, it's almost three hours long. The fact that I could sit and watch and I didn't get up and go in the 10 minute version of her hit song that she plays. I watched the whole thing. It was just great. If I summed up my entire feeling about the whole thing, about why I thought it was great, it would just be in one word, it would be wholesome, which I found very surprising. Just... Taylor Swift's worth a billion dollars, right? And she's obviously a skilled business person and as well as being oh, yeah. a skilled musician yeah. because she's made decisions about her record agreements. She's regained control of her catalog and she is now representing her former hits as she wishes to hear them. Lots and lots and lots of artists never get to that. So, you know, you just sort of think, then how come I think she's wholesome? She's down there in the stage. It's this massive production. Like there's, I don't know how many people must have been in that theater in Los Angeles, Inglewood, California. And all those dancers and the musicians. Just all of these people. And everybody really genuinely seems to be having a good time, although I'm sure they're paid to act, including her. But she's really likable. She just totally strikes me as a small town person who just never got out of the small town. Only except for now here, she's on a stage in front of 50,000 people worth a billion dollars. So I just, I was amazed actually. And the production is so amazing too. Yeah. What did you think of the magic trick? The magic trick? I don't remember. She dives in the water. Oh, well, okay. So actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, I'm compelled to find something to be negative about. (laughs) Because in the, in the video, like, because you're watching this thing and RJ had predicted this for me, you, you actually feel, Sue actually said at one point, she felt like applauding and cheering in a bunch of different places. At the end of songs often. Yeah. Yeah. Because the audience is doing it in the video and you feel like you're there. You feel, I felt like cheering and applauding, just like 
like that. But in that moment where she dives from whatever she's standing on into something, and then they have a video of her swimming along underneath the surface of the stage, they cut away. So you suddenly are reminded, oh yeah, no, you're watching a movie of a concert where they can edit things like, what did she dive into? What did that look like? Because yes. in one moment she's poised on the platform and the next moment the video of her swimming along underwater. Like I yeah. just thought, oh. But I do suspect that they did the illusion for the people at the concert as they well. They did, but at, what I would have liked to have seen was what they did as opposed to just cutting away from it because they did cut away from it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I'm sure. Yeah, you see her go and do a dive, yeah. but you don't see her entering anything. The quote water, yeah. unquote. Yeah. Because I could have only assumed that it opens and she's basically diving onto a mattress. Yeah, I, I think so And too. then it recloses and there she is. But how do they pull that off? Yeah. I'd love to actually, yeah, you're right. I'd, I'd like to see what it actually yeah. was. Well, we've entered the lottery, so who knows? Maybe <laughs> maybe we'll actually go and see the real show. Well, and we, we're talking about this, and RJ mentioned that she's like Dolly Parton, and that's accurate. Like Did Dolly I say that? Parton, yeah. Dolly Parton is all wholesome mm-hmm. and seems like a real person and is enormously wealthy, right? And how does she do that? She's been in a pretty cutthroat business for her entire adult life and she still seems like a decent person. How do you do Mm. that? It's the same with Mm. Taylor Swift, I thought. Anyway, it was real, I mean. I bet you can find on YouTube somebody at the concert who took a picture of the diving into the water. Yeah. It's a great idea. I should do that. For sure, or a YouTube. I should do that. And then, so the other thing is that if we actually win our little lottery, which we probably won't, because they already released a bunch of tickets and Sue and I got the year on the wait list message, Mm. which means maybe if we're super lucky, we'll make it in. Um, Let's say that we could buy tickets. What do you think the most cheapest list price on the tickets would be? 800 bucks. No, I don't think so. Can we ask me? Yeah, maybe. Jeez. So dismissive. 300 cheap seats? Like. Yeah, I think so. Maybe 200 to 300 for the cheap seats. I don't really know. But then, do you go, well, I'm a fan, but I'm going to actually cash in. You go. Just go. So, okay. So, let's say that I can resell them for 2000 each. Just go. So, you're saying don't pocket the 4000 mm. and take a nice vacation. Just go. <laughs> Just okay. go. All right. You get the money to take a nice vacation anyways. Once in a lifetime, Rich. All right. That's true. And it, and you do you do have those memories, right? It is a big special event. You're getting it for nothing. And whether you really love her or not, or whether you just want to see the hole that she dives into in the Yeah, I want to moment, see her dive in there, yeah. <laughs> it's free and you're not going to get that no matter what. You're well, going to go someplace on a vacation anyways, whether you harvest the money from those tickets to do it or not. You're going to take the vacation. Well, so there is that. That's just true. Go to the, and go. ethically rich. <laughs> Dude, that's what I'm, that's why I brought it up. That's the curious thing. So KJ, you would never flip tickets. Never say never. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if I, I don't want tickets, to I don't want to ask the old tiresome line. Okay. How about a million dollars? Or, no. I mean, that's kind of tiresome. Like all of yeah. us would eventually Ops. go. Yeah, sure. I'll take the yeah, million. That's just dumb. But, but really just in general as a principle, like if I, I, I kind of agree. Like I, I sell a lot of tickets over the years, probably a set every year or every, a couple yeah. sets a year where it turns out I couldn't go. And back in the day when it was easy to sell them, cause it no longer is, I would sell them for list, even though it's sold out mm. just on principle. Nowadays it's because of all that reselling stuff. Mm. I don't want to give Ticketmaster their double fees yeah. by selling using Ticketmaster facilities, but people don't want to buy from me anymore because I'm just some Joe on Craigslist who might be ripping them off. So people, so for that reason, 
I had to sell two Peter Gabriel tickets for $50 each. Ooh. And they were, I mean, they weren't perfect seats or anything either. They were at the back of the lower bowl. bucks is pretty cheap to see Peter Gabriel. And it was an amazing concert too. But, you know, ethically. So, like, if I won two $300 seats to see the Rolling Stones and I could get two grand a piece for them, I'd sell them in a heartbeat. There's no way I would want to go to the effort of driving to Pacific Coliseum or wherever, sorry, Rogers, to see the Rolling Stones is not interested, you know? Yeah, yeah. So take the money. It's For me, it's... Yeah. Because somebody else, I know this is the terrible rationale. But if but, you hadn't bought them in the first place, because you presumably you're buying them to no, flip them? If I won them in a lottery oh, the way you, won you are, and you're not, you're oh, winning not, the opportunity No, 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 we're paying for them. If you won the, won the right to buy them. I wouldn't, actually, I wouldn't buy them even. Yeah, well, that's just it. There you go. We, we hope to win the right to buy some. Well, then why on earth are you pondering whether you will flip them for big money? Because once you buy it, then you could flip it for big money. <laughs> Jeez, why am I losing the plot here? So you've, <laughs> you like it well enough to chase the tickets. Yes. And to, you know, every day, like Christmas for a month and a half. Like Sue has already Christmas stated, approach. she wouldn't flip them. But, <laughs> but, 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 but still, I still ask the question because I would be probably willing to do it. I just don't but, even know what. Aren't they trying to clamp down on that reselling somehow? I don't know how they do that. Yeah, but. they just, they fail. Oh. They've been trying for a decade or two. Ticketmaster, in truth, the beady little guys and the, you know, the the Will Ferrell types, <laughs> you know, his role in Barbie. I'm um, sorry, I didn't see the movie. Yeah, the bean the, counters. Sorry, the Jay. bean That's counters the there. Yeah, for. yeah, yeah. They're going, this is great. <laughs> this Monopoly is the best thing going. We own the venues. People have to go through us. Even Taylor Swift, who is really fan friendly, she's forced. If she wants to do this big production, she's got to deal with Ticketmaster. There is no... You go direct to Rogers Arena, or in her case, BC Place. You go straight to BC Place, and they go, yeah, we got to deal with uh, Live Nation, sorry. Live Nation, what's that got to do with Ticketmaster? They're one and the same. Mm. You know, it's just a, the whole thing is just the government fell asleep on this one. Where's antitrust when you need them, right? That is kind of an interesting remark there, too. Yeah, like, why don't they care? They broke up with the phone companies. Because people who go to concerts don't vote very rigorously, religiously, and, or what? I mean. Yeah. And you know how they bo broke up the phone companies by region? Like Ma Bell was all the U.S. Yeah. Don't know about Canada. And then yeah. each region, you got Pactel. That was one of the companies coming out of. I wonder if they sat down in a. So how about if they take the entire Ticketmaster, which is worldwide, say, sorry, you got to break up. Oh, yeah, but production Different companies. companies and, and also that strata, that vertical split up. You cannot hold concerts and sell tickets to them. I, As, think, I think production companies that are trying to set up these grand tours would object because it would make it a hundred times more complicated. Yeah, but they can do it. And, and price, well, they can, but it'd be a hundred times more complicated. That's yeah, it's more complicated, but costs reduce, so they don't mind the complexity. Uh, well, yeah, who knows? Because they're getting a cut on those costs, I think, yeah. the production companies. Yeah. But um, at the two ends of the spectrum are us, the listeners, the viewers, and the bands. Yeah. And they're not the ones making, I mean, they, they do make a fair amount of money if you're big, like Taylor Swift. But if you're not big, you're yeah. you're just kind of struggling to get along. There's this big money gobbler in the middle yeah. called Ticketmaster Live Nation, and they're all happy. Yeah, they're fine. The production with it. companies and the and the Master. venues, the venues probably they're do okay, but they're nowhere near as happy as Ticketmaster. No, but they're probably happy because now. They got a they, contract. They don't have to negotiate individually with big touring groups. You know, they don't have to deal with well, any of yeah. that. It's and, all done. And if they don't go with Ticketmaster, the big touring groups don't have the time to deal with yeah. them as an individual. Yeah. But if you split it up regionally, so it's not individual, mm. like there could be a live nation in British Columbia mm. that's unrelated to the other live nations. Mm. Well, mm, yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I mean, that's the way it used to be. I think I, I thought it was just all individual venues, one off individual, yeah. everything. Yeah. 
ticket price, the whole deal was negotiated with every single venue. Anyways, my daughter cried. Did she really like um, during the show? Well, or she she actually she, moments? she said, "Oh, geez, I'm crying." She looks so happy. Yeah, yeah. Because she just loves Taylor. She's happy to see her looking so happy. Yeah. Taylor Swift. She does the whole thing. She's a performer, right? She uses her eyes and looks at her audience, and she does all the stuff. It's yeah. stagecraft. A lot of it yeah, is stagecraft. Yeah. She genuinely does, uh, I think, appreciate her audiences. She genuinely oh, does sure. try to do her best. Yeah. But she's also a performer for sure. And yet still, you fall for the, oh, she, we love her and she loves us. Shtick. You just yeah, yeah. fall for it. I don't know why or how, but you do. Yeah. She did so many, she did six songs from my favorite album, which is Folklore. Mm. And she did Last Great American Dynasty, which is fantastic. Well, she did The Man was, The Man was one of my favorites. She bought a mansion in Rhode Island and the real estate agent told her about the original owner of the mansion. And then her song, Last Great American Dynasty is about this owner. Ooh. And Sue and I didn't know, we just innocently drove like two blocks away from it. When we were driving in Rhode Island, we could have swung around there. And I wonder went. what the family was. Uh, I think it was a uh, oil family. Actually, it was uh, the woman, I can't remember her name, but she, for a while there, owned the big standard oil thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Her husband died, she owned it, and then that was the last great American dynasty. <laughs> Of course, that ignores all the new tech guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, we really got a lot of ground covered there. You know what else we did today? We watched the moon rise out the shed window. That doesn't often happen. Basically, after September, it's overcast until May here in the mainland. But today's a bright, sunny fall day, and we got to see the moon rise. We hope you had fun. We hope you learned some stuff, but mainly we just hope you had fun because mainly we're just here for the giggles. So come back again. Come back and see us all. Bye.